Hi everybody, Jerk here. We made it. 2021. And today we have another episode of the series previously known as, not a Kraken, but currently being called Trainables. Why Trainables, you may ask? Well, it's a bit of a double entendre. On the one hand, I can use these videos to discuss my strategy and thinking and how I'm approaching the game and the featured ship. On the other hand, there was a certain film that came out in 1975 called The ABC of Sex Education for Trainables, which I don't want to spoil for anyone, but do a YouTube search and I think you'll catch the second meaning. But after the teammates I've seen this week, it is a very appropriate term. Will we keep the name? I don't know. We'll see, but let's move on. So I recently had a request to do a video on the Charles Martel, and I had this game and I thought, you know, this was really damn close. It would be a shame not to use it just because you flubbed that last shot. So here we are. First things first, Le Commander. Now I use one rudder mod and one prop mod on mine along with this commander setup, but if we were to ever get another French cruiser like, uh, I'm just spitballing here, out of the Bayard, I might rank up Rue and try a similar build, but with a bit more agility. The basics on the Chuck, everything about its guns are great, everything about its armor is awful. Its HE is great, its AP is awesome, they reload fast, they're accurate, they're everything you could ever want in a heavy cruiser. And then the armor is a wet burrito wrapper. Basically, don't show broadside to anything and don't get hit in the bow or stern or anywhere by a battleship and you'll be having a blast. I really think this might be my favorite tier 7 cruiser, but they're all really good and they can all be very fun, especially with the current state of tier 7 games being very, very heavy with battleships, both tier 7 and legendary, and a nimble or long range Charles Martel can net you quite hefty damage and XP so long as you stay on your toes and plan ahead. So let's get to this game. We're on fault line and I've got a division mate with me and an Alabama and there is a friendly with us as well. I started this round by sending my 10 kilometer torpedoes into a heavily trafficked spot and managed to score a hit. I then used the red Belfast smoke to prevent the Vladivostok from seeing me and merely farm damage from them. But now that I'm spotted, it's time to get moving because I really don't want to be hit especially in this burrito armor, and yeah, that's why. I'm pretty lucky that it wasn't worse than that, but uh, it definitely could have been. But now, we're going to get up along the side here and maybe do the old T-Bull shuffle until we go unspotted, and then turn around and get more centrally located. Concentrate fire on the enemy warship. So I didn't really want to turn that way because now my turrets have to turn all the way around. And normally I'll plan my turns ahead of time and try and keep my turrets always pointed the right direction. Because all the time spent turning around is lowering the amount of shots I can take and lowering my own effectiveness. Now that's not to say you always need to be shooting. Sometimes going unspotted is the right move, but if you want to be firing your guns and you can't because your turrets are facing the wrong way, well that means you goofed. So I'm heading back to my spawn mates, and I think around now was when I looked up at the mini-map and I was seeing red. Literally, look at all the red up there. I don't mind that we haven't capped A, as there were two radar cruisers and there's still an Atlanta preventing our <laughs> from capping. But look at B and C. Looks like the prospect of a destroyer is giving our teammates all kinds of consternation. In spite of the fact that the two destroyers on the enemy team are a Tashkent, which has awful detectability, and an Akazuki, which only has a single set of torps. So reading this situation as it is, I have decided I'm no longer needed here. My division mate is more than capable of sinking the Atlanta, and should at least be able to stall the Vladivostok into a draw. But the three red ships on B are about to flank our cluster at C, which would be a very bad, because eventually that would lead to it becoming us down here versus the world. 
So I inform him I'm headed to B to try and rectify this situation up there. And this is something that Chuck is great at. It's quite fast so I can get over there quick. We know it's just a destroyer and two cruisers. And so my squishiness shouldn't really be an issue. And now we can see what the Chuck's AP can do to a Baltimore. <laughs> Quick work. Though that last shot was a weird delay. And now we can see how the Chuck can deal with the HE spam of the Cleveland. And it's true, the Cleveland will out DPM the Chuck. But to do that, they will need all their guns firing at me. And as we've seen, against the Chuck's AP, that is a very risky proposition. But this Cleveland is playing it pretty smart. And you can see I'm actively changing my shell types in anticipation of the move they're going to make. But their greed will end up getting the best of them as they go in for the turn here and I get the shot off that should ruin them. Okay, maybe I need one. Okay, this shot should ruin them. No. <laughs> or my division made in the Alabama will ruin them. <laughs> oh, see, that would have been a Kraken. Oh, uh, well. So we very quickly stop that push, but you'll notice I'm located, which tells me the destroyer is pretty close. Closer to me than my division mate and not on the cap either. So they must be just around the corner. So let's pop our sonar and see if we can't catch them with their pants down. There's their torps. So we were correct in our assumption of the direction they were. Now, can we just, okay, I'm spotted. And oh boy. Yeah, one thing the Charles Martel is amazing at is just deleting destroyers. Now it's true that destroyer was low health, but the HE on this just rips them. Man, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Actually, I'm stuck between two rocks. <laughs> I really need to go support the C group, but my division mate desperately needs help with the Vladivostok after our friendly <laughs> she died in there somewhere, no doubt trying to torp rush in Atlanta or something. So, yeah, now, in hindsight, there's no real way to know if going over to B would have been the right call or not. I don't know what would have happened. It's easy to assume doing the thing you didn't do would inverse the outcome and put the blame on yourself, but we really just don't know. But when all's said and done, I gotta go help my buddy. So I'm gonna head over here and we're gonna pinch this flighty boss duck. So the first thing we try to do here is I tell my div mate to back up because maybe the Vlad will come forward and run into my torps. But the Vlad isn't moving. Yet. And again, we can see the speed of the Chuck coming into play as I quickly come back over here. I haven't been spotted in a minute. I have to wonder, does the Vlad suspect I'm coming this way? Or do they think I'm headed somewhere else? Either way, they probably not expecting me to come around the rear side of this island. Now I do know that at three kilometers I will be spotted by the target acquisition system but there's probably very little chance the Vlad's guns are pointed this way. In fact I was asking my division mate if they were and he said no. So this is going to give me the chance to do a torp rush of my own. Now of course as I'm spotted, the Vlad starts to pull forward, but it's I've got the Vlad. It's not that fast, and right there we see what the AG can do, which is not much, and I quickly switch to AP to see... Well, you don't always get to do these experiments, so I might as well try it. Not 
two shed. But I get the torp set off, and <laughs> at this point, I'm, I'm telling my division mate, are you ramming him? What are you doing? No, no, you're going to block all my torps. But we do catch the Vlad with one, and that's the end of Vlad. They're, they've got a permanent flood going on, and they're going down. All right. How can we save this game? It's 3v3. I'm checking to see what they have left. A Massachusetts, a Nelson, and the Tashkent. We've got no idea what their health pool is. They've got a big point lead. And they're taking B cap. So it's definitely an uphill battle. I quickly check the health of my teammates. My div mate is not doing well and he is out of heals. And the other ship on our team is in New Orleans. So that's already kind of um, a struggle right there. <laughs> but basically the only option we really have here is to take out all three or I don't know do something amazing so let's give it a shot there's the Tashkent and he's low health so let's get a shot on him and oh well he disappears but I do know that was a very solid hit so that Tashkent is probably going to be playing quite defensively now There unfortunately isn't a very good spot where that New Orleans can get to now. Maybe if they were on the north side of the island that they're right next to, they could blob HE over and try to burn down a battleship. But their current location is pretty much a f in a firing range for those battleships with 16-inch guns. I go ahead and get spotted here again, so I know the Tashkent's not that far. I'm going to go ahead and pop my sonar. And the Tashkent is very fast, so I am not going to be able to catch up with him. But what I can do is try and get a little bit more damage going on out there. So I'll send in those torps and no, the New Orleans goes down. But that's something I should have mentioned earlier. The Chuck does have 10 kilometer torps, which is pretty good. But I mean, what are the chances that I would actually hit something with those? I mean... The odds of that would be like a near-death Tashkent just randomly firing its guns and giving its location away. I mean, the chances of, this, of that are like getting 7 million subscribers to your dumb YouTube channel. Now, I don't know about all of you. But if I were in a battleship with 16-inch guns, like, say, a Nelson or a Massachusetts, and I was going up against a nearly dead Alabama and a Charles Martel, I really don't think that I'd be hiding behind an island. Wait a minute, did I just get a torpedo hit? And it's flooding? So you're telling me there's a chance. Torpedo uh-oh. Division mate just went down. Alright, fingers crossed that that keeps flooding, but what are the chances the Tashkent... Oh. Okay, then. Looks like that flooding is stopped. And I'm presented with two options here, left or right. And I choose right. And just like I said before, I don't know if going left would have altered the outcome of this game, but right now I firmly believe it would have. But instead I go right. I don't get the Citadel somehow. I think I aim too high. And that's going to be the game. I do get one last chunky salvo off on this Massachusetts as they dev strike me. And that is going to do it. 
let's take a look at the results screen. 2,270 XP, which we can see would have been 3,400 had this been a win, which is a very good game. I hope you like this look at the Chuck. If you did, give it a like. If you like hiding behind islands in a battleship, then hit dislike. Leave a comment or a question if you have one. And hit subscribe if you'd like to make sure that you always see all of these high quality videos. Alright guys, I'll get back out there soon. We'll have another one. And we'll talk then.